Howdy everybody, this is the Mega Mac Cat here, back again, and I am back with another of my fighting game fun side project, with something very unique, as you can no doubt see, and as you no doubt saw during that incredible introduction sequence. This game is indeed Psychic Force, and it has perhaps a very niche audience, but it's actually very well known in the especially for old-school fighting game fans. It was one of the most unique and unusual fighting games of its day. It was also one of the most impressive because it was something that really stood out and was really different from existing games of its time. Now, I need to set the time, change character, character knowledge. No. And it's a very simple game. Two attacks a dash, and a charge. And that is it. And what makes this game unique is not its fighting system so much as the way, it's, the way it handles its fighting style. The game is very simplistic in its overall actual controls, but the actual concepts that underlie it are some of the best and most unique I've ever seen. So we're not going to do story mode, because I this is one of those games in which story mode... In Japan, I bet it was really interesting and really cool, but in America, one well, of my few complaints about this game is its voice acting. The English voice acting was just silly. Some of the characters had actually good-sounding voices, but the majority of them were very, very, very irritating and somewhat un inappropriate for the character. They just were. Now, here's our roster. A fire type by the name of Burn... A light type by the name of Emilio, wind type, electric type, gravity type, time type, magic type, science type, and then him. Now we're going to do burn because honestly I haven't played this in like two years. I barely remember any of the moves. So I'm hoping I can remember enough with burn to make this work. Now, you'll notice something's different right out of the gate. What's different? Look around you. No floor, no, no 2D plane, plane. Yet we're fighting on a 2D system, and that's all to do with the way the way that the game moves. It doesn't limit you to the to the flat 2D plane. You can move vertical, horizontal, all that kind of stuff. And each character is unique in that they have a variety of different special moves. Burn, of course, uses fire. He has basic attacks. He has hard attacks. He has power attacks. Each character has a variety of special moves, but what's different is that none of them use the traditional move style. There's no quarter circles or any of that junk here. Instead, it's a combination of directions. So back, back, forward, and an attack, you launch a volley of bullets. Time it right, though, and instead of that, he does this. Creates a giant firebird, similar to what you saw in the... similar to what was seen in that opening that he then hurls at his enemy. Now his enemy can fire back with an attack of his own. 
and and the different strengths have different have different abilities. Say if you uh, if you have different moves that you want to try, you can learn different techniques that'll be very useful. And every character also fights very differently. Like the character I was playing against against was a much more trap centric character. Whereas Burn is a much more offensive character. Now Gates is all about is all about pinning and trapping with guns and firepower. Which I can return the favor thanks to Burn. But what really makes him annoying is that he is probably the best range character in the game in terms of being able to sort of like keep the characters at a distance. Now that being said, not every character has the has the strongest or most powerful attacks, but each character is unique in their own way. Pardon me. Now, when you're playing as Burn, it's all about figuring out how to use your special techniques effectively. The other side of the coin is dashing to keep ahead of your enemy and blocking to prevent his attacks. And you can use both regular attacks, super attacks, blocks, super blocks, and all of them take that energy meter at the bottom left corner of the screen. Your health is at the top, is on the top on your side. So let's see if we can, yep, he's done. <coughs> My apologies. Living in the desert, you, you suffer the dust. And I know I've brought that up before, but it bears repeating. <laughs> now, Ready? Every, every character is unique, has their own unique stage and background, and all of them have their own story, which each character's story is very interesting. Emilio, for example, is a good kid whose power is so extreme he can't control it. And what you're seeing here is what happens when he loses control. He literally destroys everything in the general area. Burn was a normal guy until he accidentally had his powers awakened by a friend who is actually the main boss of this game, Keith, who I did not have unlocked at the time of this, of this recording for some reason. I could have sworn I had him unlocked by this point. But, but Keith is his natural enemy. He's the ice guy you saw in the opening. Now that being said, I don't remember all the moves for this character, but I remember most of them. I really wish there there's one particular movie he has where he like traps his target in a in a flaming circle, the one that you saw on the title screen, and then and then just roast him alive. Ready? You can also do basic combos if you're close enough. The game has a close range combat system, but it's really not the point of the game. This game's whole point yeah, is all about those special techniques and super moves. And burn is all about the is all about hit me with the fire. How do you like that? Now the more powerful moves take the greatest amount of your energy, and you have to recharge to do wow, special super that. special moves. If you're out of energy, or if you're drained, you become exceedingly vulnerable and can be pounded to death by your opponent. Certain characters are absolute masters of exploiting this, like Wong, for example. Now, Grav here, now Brad here is just a psychopath who happens to have the ability to control gravity, which, you know, wrap your head around that. There's also an interesting note. If you attack and knock someone against the wall enough, and do it at the right time, you can blast them through the wall. Especially if you hit them with a hard enough attack at the right time. It's a random event, and doesn't happen on a, on a conceivably predictable basis. But it can be, but it can be done, and it's awesome when it happens. Now, right now, Brad got a lucky start off, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can turn this around real quick. There we go. Yep, and he's down. So yeah, each character plays and fights differently, and learning their techniques is a big part of it. In fact, it's the biggest part of this. Unlike many games where it's all about memorization, this game is more about learning positioning, timing, and effective. You know, and when I say effective, I mean what is effective against what. You know, in most games, it's learning combos or learning 
you know, what moves have priority. But in this game, it's about learning when and where to use what you have. Because you have a very limited limited set of moves, but you can do them in, in different ways and in different positions. So I can do my special techniques from anywhere on the screen, and that can actually allow me to finish off the battle without any warning. So, so if, like she's trying to use one of her special techniques and catches me with it, I'm going to take damage, but if I can get out of the way, way I can I can turn that right back around on top of her. See, I had an opportunity there and I missed it. Another thing is learning the timing for the moves. One of the few things about this game is that you have to learn how to how to time out the special techniques. Because if you don't, you can actually do the wrong move completely by accident because some of the moves share similar commands. Got her. I'm trying to remember what his smash through technique was. I think it's that flame blast, but I don't remember. So like I said, it has been at least two years since I played this with any regularity. I played Evil Zone more than I played this, which that's actually kind of sad because I love this game. And I love Evil Zone too, but it's like There we go, got her. So basically if you go into arcade mode, you're just gonna do the arcade thing. If you go into story mode, you do story mode. If you go into versus mode, you do versus mode. I mean the game is very, very light on modes, and that is true. And it's, you know, very true of games of this era. They had very few and very limited modes that you just got, especially for a fighting game, you just got what you got and that was it. You know, it's not like today where you'd expect like a dozen different modes and tournaments and all this other junk. It's like, you got what you want, you got what you could, and you were happy to get it. Because, honestly, games like this were, were rare even even in the weird days of the original PlayStation. Time now to get serious. I wish I was king. I mean, this game I don't think would have ever been released on any other other platform other than the PlayStation. You know, and of course it got it got an upgrade upgrade and a uh, what was it called? It got an upgrade and a sequel on the on the Dreamcast. But the only reason that occurred was because this one had a surprising popularity in Japan. It didn't do bad over here, but it was never really advertised or released here. There it is. That's the move I wanted to do earlier. That's that fire circle I told you about. So, and that one is one of the few moves that's actually a quarter circle technique. Uh, now, Wendy is a unique character in her own right because all her moves sidestep other moves. So she can hit you even if you're about to hit her. So you have to you have to think of how you're gonna fight her, Ready? you know, very carefully. Which is why I'm using that. If you use that move, you can then detonate it and blow her right to hell. It's funny because actually they're friends in the game, if I remember correctly from the story. Her and Emilio too are also friends. In fact, I think I think she's like the only person who's like ever helped Emilio with anything, and like he actually trusts her on that because he thinks that she'll protect him. And you know, it's like weird sort of friendship. Also, I think that robot lady with the lightning was her sister. Notes on that. Damn, I forgot how hard this game was. I forget how hard these games were. Okay, she is really stomping the ever-loving crap out of me. Ready? Now I always loved her level because of that because that awesome blimp like floating around the back. Oh, she still caught me. Yeah, hers, her moves have, in some cases, have, like, really insane priority. And I think it is based on the fact that, you know, her wind abilities will actually do 
tremendous, tremendous damage against like certain characters. Oh, see what I mean? That freaking tornado of hers. Very, very hard to dodge and very, very powerful. But, but she has a, she has very low stamina, so she can be beaten. There we go. Oh, she walked right into it. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, so I think I got her this time. Man, she is tough. Stand up, Wendy. Ready? Go! Okay, got her with that one. Yeah, and another big part is learning the way that certain moves can cancel others, because that Firebird can actually cancel out moves in its, in its initial its initial animation, because it that first sweep of the flames will burn out any attack that comes at you, and you can still finish it out with that with that secondary Firebird. So. Like I said, it's a game that's way more about tactics, strategy, and knowing your moves than it is about memorization or reflexes. You know, I will I will freely admit that the reason she is handing me my rear is because I forgot my strategies for beating her in the years since I've actually played this game. And that's all to do with the fact that I am now, you know, I have now been playing so much Street Fighter and Tekken over the last several years that I've actually gotten sort of inured to the unique styles of games like this. It's one of the reasons why I still play uh, Evil Zone so frequently is that I, I don't want to forget how, how to actually play that game effectively because it was one of my favorite games. Uh, see? I just can't get my rhythm back with her. She's just beating me to death. And that is admittedly one of the things about this game, is the arcade mode gets very difficult very quickly. The story mode is actually a little bit more balanced. I was kind of surprised when I played it, played it a couple of years back at just how balanced and, and, and doable the story mode is compared to, the, compared to this mode. It's like, really? And that being said, I think that this is one of those games that I would recommend getting just because of how how unusual and weird it is. I tell people all the time, you ought to look for games that are that are outside your wheelhouse to broaden your horizons. That's why I'm a huge fan of imports. That's why I love the import scene so much. Because there's games out there that come only to Japan that are so unique and unusual. And sometimes kind of creepy and disturbing, but I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I swear, I wonder if that's like D3's main wheelhouse is just weird and unusual stuff, you know? But this game was actually published by Acclaim, which at the time was doing a lot of weird stuff with their games. They would, they would literally bring in like stuff just randomly from from uh, all over the world and you know publish it to just see what kind of. They sort of had the throw it on the wall and see what sticks mentality, I think. I think my biggest complaint about about the modern era of games is too much of it is just playing it safe. It just feels like they like they just play it safe and never actually try anything unique or different. Or when they do, they mess it up horribly. Looking at you, murdered soul suspect. Like that. I have actually played that game, and that game sucks. Stand up, Wendy. Ready? Now, that being said, I'm going to try and beat her, because I just want to beat her after all the crap she's given me. And then after that, I'm going to let you guys make your own decisions on the game. But in my opinion, this game is, a, is an example of what, you should, of what the industry used to be able to do. And what it used to be able to do was come up with some unique and great stuff. And now, 
I feel like it's just too much of the same, too much, too much of the old hat, as it were. So I'm not, I'm done with this. As much as I love this game, it's not something they really need to spend a whole lot of time time on. Once you've seen the basics, there isn't that much to do but learn each character's style and master each character's play style. Once you get a grip on it, it's actually fairly fun. And I, I remember me and my friends used to play this like nobody's business. So, again, this is Mega Mac Head, and I think I think if you're looking to broaden your horizons on, on the fighting game, or just in video games in general, start looking for the odd and sometimes very odd stuff that may come up. The older stuff, too. I mean, just to be truthful, I find stuff at the local uh, retro game store that I didn't know existed. And I lived through the really? era. So I tell people all the time, you know, be surprised what you find out there. And don't be afraid to try and pick up unusual or strange things, you know? But, for now, I'm going to go ahead and get back to some other games I'm going to be playing. And I'm also going to be doing some more of Evil Zone, which Something I've been has sort of holding off on. I haven't actually done it for a long time. Close friend Keith and the mysterious attack. And hopefully, the I can then find some more really unusual, weird power. stuff to bring in, and Keith, show you all some stop. neat Do stuff I that you may you. not have known about or may have forgotten. Until then, though, this is the Mega Mac Cat, and I will see you next time with some more fighting game fun and weirdness and ready expect to see another another character playthrough of evil zones within the next few days see you then folks